host Chris Erskine and this is my weekly update. I'm here on the beach trip in front of the uh, beach, trip, uh, beach trip lighthouse uh, built around 1855, 1858. It's one of the older structures in Hamilton and there's been a lighthouse on this site I think from about the 1830s onwards since the building of the canal uh, which occurred in there around 1823 to 1826 with Irish laborers. Um, it's a fantastic Fantastic site. Um, I, I must admit, I'm not a big. Uh, there's there's a core group of people in Hamilton that are very beach trip oriented. I had a friend. I have uh, had a friend. Uh, his family grew up on the beach trip, and very much uh, beach trip has its own culture, its own sort of uh, uh, places like Toronto Island and Toronto. And uh, I never really was able to get into that. And uh, and I always. Uh, the beach strip and its history, its long history. There used to be a tavern here back in the 18, 1880s, uh, uh, sorry, 1780s, 1790s. Has a very rich history behind it. Uh, that tavern's long gone, of course. And then the building of the beach, uh, the, uh, the canal, um, and first uh, there was a portage uh, that connected Lake Ontario to uh, uh, Hamilton Harbor. But then um, over time, the, the, the excavated the uh, the canal which uh, occurred in the 18, 1826 1823 1824 to 1826 period and that brought in the Irish from uh, Erie uh, the Erie Canal project that was uh, just finishing up in the US and I really got uh, Corktown started here as uh, an Irish community which I find really interesting and that's the most fascinating thing I find but particularly about uh, the lighthouse is that for uh, for basically everyone who came to Hamilton by ship, the first thing they saw was this lighthouse, uh, especially from the 1850s onwards. It would have been uh, basically this lighthouse. And so in effect, it's a star version of the Statue of Liberty. Uh, people were coming for uh, new economic opportunities, new freedom. Hamilton in the 1840s and 1850s was very much a frontier town. If you were heading out west, uh, west of here, uh, to western Ontario, uh, uh, you know, London, uh, Windsor, uh, not so much Windsor, but anywhere west, northwest of here to find fine farm properties, Hamilton basically was the frontier town. And uh, so that's very uh, fascinating. So, you know, people when they were coming from uh, from Europe, they could make the uh, the voyage over, and they, if they survive, uh, particularly the Irish in the 1830s, the pre-famine fi Irish, come over, uh, they would have come and saw this lighthouse, come into the canal uh, for the uh, canal here, and into the harbor. The harbor has changed drastically since those days. It's been really what you see today is totally, almost a completely man-made uh, with heavy industry coming in at the turn of the century. But they would have docked down at the city ports uh, at the base of John Street and, uh, and then later at James Street. And they would have gone up James Street uh, and uh, the Kerr buildings, they would have gone most likely to uh, uh, the Archibald Kerr and bought uh, their uh, kitchenware and the dishes and all the supplies they needed to outset their uh, future farm uh, homestead. And that's how Kerr made his fortune was through selling to people who were uh, settling, either settling in Hamilton as artisans and small business owners and, and not so much farmers because most of the land was owned by then. But or moving beyond Hamilton and finding, uh, setting up farms outside of Hamilton. And then uh, if they were doing that, they would be buying their supplies from in Hamilton, mainly at the Kerr store, and then heading out west to uh, find your fame and fortune. Uh, so, you know, people often, you know, Hamilton has the industrial image from the, really from the turn of the century onwards, from 1910 onwards, when the Firestone and the, uh, the amalgamation of the steel companies into Dominion Steel, and then later uh, uh, Stelco, and then U.S. Steel now. Uh, they think of that, but really that's a very late, that's a late development, really for the, from the 1840s to the 1880s or even the 1890s, it was very much, a, a, as a one author described, 
craft capitalism. This was uh, first uh, 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 supplying for the the local needs of uh, uh, people. There's uh, clock shops or piano makers. There was uh, photogra uh, photographers. There was uh, artists. There was uh, people who sell clothing and goods and supplies. And that was really for the local market. And then as you get into the later, towards the end of the uh, 19th century, uh, you start getting into more of a regional export market where you would be shipping off to Toronto or to uh, Niagara on the Lake or to London. And, and so then it became much more regional economy. But in the early days, when the Irish came in and other settlers in the 1830s and the 1840s, this was frontier town. And so it's a, it's a really, you know, uh, again, uh, it's a quite an amazing fact that this is what they would have saw. Now, unfortunately, the landscape around the lighthouse has changed quite dramatically. Uh, the bridge, we have the, uh, the bridge uh, is from, uh, there's always been a lift bridge here for, I think from uh, 1860s onwards. It would have been a smaller affair and the canal would have been much uh, narrower at that time. But, uh, and then there was a, a boat, uh, a sort of a marina here, a boat, uh, I forget what they called the place. It was uh, very fashionable in those days. And people would come here in those days for recreation. This is, the beach route was sort of like, again, like uh, Center Island, where you would go and escape the city, the heat of the city, especially in the summertime, and come out here to somewhere that's nice, got a nice good breeze even on today, has a nice breeze here. They come out and have a, a very nice uh, afternoon uh, re relaxing, and either they take a boat back to Hamilton or they take carriage or walk back into the city. So it has a very, uh, very long history, uh, uh, and as a, both a recreational and as a navigational uh, 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 port of entry to Hamilton. And so today it's now surrounded by uh, the new form of transportation that dominates the car. So we've got the, the, the bridge here, which really isolates it from the from its former uh, role as a lighthouse. And then uh, behind, in front, looking this way, there's the Skyway Bridge, and that came in 50, 59, 56. And that, you know, that was uh, one of the major reasons why my family actually left uh, Hamilton uh, and moved to Burlington in the in the 60s was because of easy transportation to the uh, the new suburbs of uh, Burlington. And because uh, before that, it would have been a beach trip. It would have been a much longer uh, drive out, especially uh, my father had a business in the uh, East End here. And so you take the, while the beach trip would have still worked, um, and I think you probably used it a lot because it, it was a toll bridge in the beginnings. Um, the, the building of the Skyway Bridge really helped uh, exit a lot of people out into Burlington and made Burlington in that quasi zone, uh, is Burlington part of Hamilton or Burlington part of Toronto? And that's uh, that's something I've always uh, grew up with. That uh, well, who do we identify with more? So, but uh, you know, my family's been in Hamilton for over 100 years, uh, both uh, either working, or both either working or living there, and uh, and uh, that continues today with myself. And uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a really uh, an interesting dynamic. So this is really a very centered uh, transportation focus of Hamilton really if you think about it, with the, the, with the, uh, the highways the, the train that used to go I think there used to be a train along here as well uh, and um, and um, yeah there was a train here uh, I remember I think it used to go along the bridge and then the uh, and then uh, the boats and the, tra and the ships so anyhow uh, that's uh, I wanted to come out here I haven't been out here for a very long time since really since I've been a kid uh, and take a look at seeing how the lighthouse is standing up it's in a little bit rough shape uh, there's uh, people have been trying to fundraise to restore it, and also the uh, the light man, the light keeper's house next to it. And uh, but it's really in an unfortunate location. Very, it's a very hostile, hostile place for uh, you know isolated from the from the lake that once served, and uh, and it's very noisy here. So 
Uh, but anyhow, it's a great feature, it should be safe, and in my view, it serves the equivalent of the Statue of Liberty for the immigrants of Hamilton who came here during the 19th century. Uh, and it should be viewed as, as, as a, a, of equal importance as, as the Statue of Liberty in, 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 in New York City. Uh, and because this was really, for a lot of people, the gateway to the rest of Canada. Uh, later it would change, but for uh, a portion of the 19th century, you had to come from Hamilton to go to the rest of the, the, rest of the country. So anyhow, um, uh, good talking to you and take care. Bye.